Okay, hello. In this video, I will talk about uh, why we want to do scientific programming and what is scientific programming. First of all, these are some key statements from the open science movement. They talk about um, science being um, a tool to build and organize knowledge, to text explanations uh, about the world uh, that we live in, and um, one very important key aspect that they communicate is that we should share our results with others and uh, that we do this transparently so that we uh, open up everything we did and open source our projects so that everyone can reproduce our results and check that the results we found were not a statistical anomaly. So it, it wasn't a coincidence that we got the results and um, make sure that this is actual science and not um, an error in the in the things we did. Furthermore, uh, science should be systematically. So we have to make sure that our results are really what is happened or what is happening in the world and that this is really true. And for that, we have to do exhaustive tests and make sure that everything is actually how we think it is and not that uh, we have some some kind of a bias in us which makes us think that is this way but it's actually different and this also closely closely relates to the objectivity aspect science should be objective meaning that um, we should try to remove our human bias from the science as much as possible and therefore create results that actually mean something in this world and are not um, kind of randomly um, occurred in the experiments we did. And without these things, um, it wouldn't be science. So science is really uh, caring about that the results are what is true in the world and not that we found something in an experiment that was poorly designed um, which then led to some results that were not actually true in this world. So we want to show you that programming helps with doing uh, clean and correct science in a way that programming is a tool used for um, dealing with data, doing things systematically and automatically and trying to remove human bias as much as possible. Um, there are many tools, especially also in Python, which help um, with dealing with large amounts of data, which are often present in scientific experiments. Um, every programming language is basically caring about automating things so that humans don't have to do something manually, but that things that might not even be possible uh, manually are done automatically so that humans have less work. Code can also help to communicate our results to others because programming languages are an agreed on uh, type of language that allows to explain exactly what someone did in an experiment uh, to achieve the results and um, everyone can understand how exactly it worked because there's no room of interpretation and every computer interprets the same bit of code in the same way. Now, since transparency is very crucial in scientific projects, open sourcing code is also a great way to um, help provide other people who might want to look at uh, the results of an experiment and understanding how exactly it works and um, to also make sure that others can check your work and make sure that you did something, uh, you did everything right and that there are no errors in the way it was analyzed or um, how the whole, how the whole um, experiment was constructed. And this also helps make uh, science more robust to human errors and make sure that it's actually um, true what we find out. Yes, we definitely want to write clean code um, because clean code helps achieving all these goals since clean code helps to understand um, everything better and makes it easier for other humans and also you if you want to look at your code like 
couple of months uh, later, then it makes it a lot easier to understand what you've done and how everything works. So now, why do we want to use Python for this? Python is a very high-level language created in the 90s, and it was initially designed as a language to start programming, um, meaning that it has a very simple syntax, it's very easy to get into, and a lot of Python code actually looks like English sentences, so everyone who has a little bit of programming knowledge is able to understand uh, what's going on in a piece of code which makes this a great language to share uh, projects with other people who might not have as deep of an understanding of programming. One big disadvantage of Python is that it's very inefficient, meaning that it's uh, slow to run and um, doing something in Python or executing the Python code takes more time than, for example, executing C++ or C code. But this disadvantage can be uh, removed by using scientific libraries, which will be uh, explained in this course. And since these libraries um, are written in C or C++, or at least most of them, um, they are very efficient and uh, remove the big disadvantage of Python being an inefficient language. Python is inefficient because it's very high level and it's uh, interpreted dynamically. This means that the Python interpreter doesn't look at the whole code before running it, but it just goes through the code while running it. And um, while it's running this, it of course has to check some things, um, keep track of what data types some variables have and which functions are declared in a certain scope. And uh, for example, C++ does all that beforehand um, during compile time and then uh, writes everything it needs to know into the executable file, uh, which can then be run and it's very efficient. Python does not have these uh, compiled executable files, but it just has the source files and is basically translated while it's running. Being a very high level language, Python also includes some features which also make it a little more inefficient but help the programmers and the developers to write uh, code easier and to get something done in fewer lines of code. And one example for that is um, a garbage collector. Um, in C++, for example, you have to uh, remove every variable you create from the um, computer's memory after you've finished using it. Uh, while in Python, this is done automatically. So you don't have to keep track of variables uh, that you still use uh, or maybe you don't use um, and you have to free again. Uh, this is all done in the background automatically and the garbage collector takes care of that. But of course, this means that the garbage collector will take some time, some CPU time um, in running and making the whole code slower. Another feature that makes Python a little slower is uh, that you have dynamic typing and this means that variables can have uh, different types in the runtime of a program. Um, and for example, you can create a variable and assign an integer to it. You say a equals three, for example, and uh, then you do something with that. But after that, you want to assign a different value to a. And in C++ or Java, for example, this wouldn't work because variables can only have one data type. But in Python, this is possible, and you can just say a equals cat, for example. And then um, the data type of the variable a is string and not an integer anymore. But this means that uh, the Python interpreter has to check the variable data type every time this variable is referenced in code. So it has to go into its own internal state and look up what was last written to this variable and what data type is it and what can I do with this data type? So yeah, Python is very high level um, and therefore a little bit inefficient, but this can be um, an, an advantage because um, the inefficiency is removed by libraries, which make Python so great. Um, Python has great ecosystem with lots of libraries and many people who are trying to help um, online and uh, answer stack overflow questions and all of that. And um, 
yeah, this makes Python such a great language for uh, science because it's very open and many people can easily get into it and it's very easy to understand everything that's going on. Um, we compiled a little bit of a summary why Python might be better than other languages um, that might be used um, in science. First, we compared it to MATLAB. Um, MATLAB is kind of similar to Python in what it does, but um, it's closed source, meaning that um, the source code for MATLAB is not available and only few people work on MATLAB uh, or on developing the tool MATLAB. Um, whereas Python is an open source project and um, also free. And MATLAB is uh, a licensed product, which is very expensive and um, not really friendly for anyone who just wants to do like a small hobby project because you have to buy the license um, for MATLAB first. Um, Python is better for uh, better than Java for science because um, it's very easy in Python to write something that does a lot in a few lines of code um, while still being very uh, explainable and easy to get. Whereas Java is a little bit clunky and you have to write lots of code to get a small thing running, um, which is partly due to very complex uh, object orientation in Java and some restrictions there. But Java is of course a great language for other tools, uh, for other applications. And it's for example, um, widely used in enterprise applications uh, where Python has some more disadvantages. So it always depends on what you want to do with the language. Um, but for science, we found that Python is our best option here. Um, again, for science, Python is better than C++ because it's very, very easy to get stuff done. And um, in C++, you often have to write lots of code similar as Java to get something small done. And it's very tedious to um, load data, for example, or to run some analysis on the data because you have to do everything yourself and manage a lot of things. Um, and yes, there are some good libraries for C++ and Java as well, but Python has just this easy syntax and um, is using these libraries just as efficient as C++ um, while being very easy to understand and a great tool, a very versatile tool to get lots of things done. Now, R is a programming language that is used a lot for statistics um, and Python can also be used for statistics. We will also introduce this in this course. Um, there are some great libraries for statistics in Python, which actually borrow the R syntax um, and try to recreate everything you have in R in Python, which makes Python basically um, a superset of R which is more powerful because you can do lots of other things with Python that are very difficult um, or tedious to do in R. So Python is um, in this case really a better tool than R for science. All right, and this wraps up the very small introduction to um, scientific programming and why we want to use Python in this course. And I hope this helped understand a little bit of why we chose Python as a, a programming language for science and not um, any other programming languages out there.